I don't know what it is about Christian churches, but there are so many Christians out there that claim to be mature spiritual giants, but they're kind of missing the point. Because a lot of people think that maturity is all about how much knowledge you have, how much of the Bible that you know. Now, it's not bad or wrong to know the Bible. It's actually really good to know the Bible. But knowing the Bible isn't what makes you mature. In fact, the Bible says that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. In this video, we're going to talk about the true mark of maturity. Here's the truth. We grow, we mature by helping others. The real mark of spiritual maturity is not how much you know or how much you've studied or even how long you've been a Christian. The mark of spiritual maturity is about loving other people enough to help them. Jesus asked this one time of his disciples, hey, what were you talking about on the road? They didn't answer because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. And so he sat down and he called the 12 disciples over to him and he said, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. See, in American business culture, whoever is the boss is up at the top of the org chart, but in God's kingdom, it's upside down. He said, if you want to be at the top, you have to go to the bottom and be willing to serve everyone else. So that means the first way to grow is by serving people. And this wasn't just something that Jesus talked about. This wasn't just some theory or philosophy of his. This was something that Jesus actually modeled in the life of his discipleship group. In John 13, Jesus did this crazy thing. He washed his disciples' feet, and then afterward, he put his robe back on again, and he sat down and he asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, because that's what I am. But since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I've given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. See, being a servant wasn't just some philosophy or some business theory of Jesus. This was something that he actually put into practice. I mean, imagine this. This is the Son of God himself, Jesus himself, and he's lowering himself to this this thing that only the lowest servant would do. He's washing the nasty feet of his disciples. But he did it all to make a point. He said, if you really want to be my follower, if you really want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, you've got to be willing to get dirty. You've got to be willing to serve other people. I think there's a second thing here to learn also. We grow by giving financially to God's work. I know so many Christians who claim to be followers of Jesus, but you would never know it by how they spend their money. You know, most of us are really extravagant when it comes to spending on ourselves. But when it comes to giving to the local church, when it comes to giving to missions, when it comes to giving to things that advance the kingdom of God, I mean, we might just give a couple bucks here or there or drop a 10 in the plate. But look at what Paul said to the church in Corinth. He said, since you excel in so many ways, in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. See, what was happening in the church in Corinth is a lot like what is happening in a lot of churches and for a lot of Christians today. Here were all of these longtime churchgoers who considered themselves mature and godly. They probably went to Bible studies. They probably had learned how to you know, pray and all these great things. And those things are wonderful. But they were missing this thing. They weren't actually givers. So if you really want to be mature, if you really want to be great, establish the discipline of being a financial giver in your local church to world missions and to anything that is advancing the kingdom of God. Don't just be generous toward yourself, but grow in the grace of giving and be generous to the things of God. And that leads us to the last mark of maturity. See, the greatest way to grow and mature as a Christian is by mentoring somebody else. Now, Jesus called this disciple-making, but it just boils down to entering into the life of another person and helping them pursue God, walking with them until they are really going full circle in their own pursuit of God. Now, hopefully, you've had someone doing this with you. Maybe you've been going through this video and this whole series with a mentor or a small group. Do you know that you can do the same thing? And that's the greatest way to show your maturity. One of the last things Jesus told his disciples was this. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. 
Did you know that that verse wasn't just written for the original disciples 2,000 years ago? Jesus wrote that for me and for you. He wants us to get in the game and help someone else pursue God. Now, I'll put some more information about how to do that right here in this video. But I encourage you, if you really want to go full circle, if you really want to be mature, if you really want to grow as a Christian, the best way to do it is by helping someone else pursue God. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. I hope it was helpful for you. Don't forget, use those questions below to talk about this with your family, with your small group, or with your mentor. And I encourage you to check out some of the other resources that we have online at PursueGod.org and continue to pursue God one topic at a time.